Hello and welcome to my bonus mission for Mission to Jewel. So I was unable to get to Tylo due to the heavy gravity of the planet. So I designed a craft to get me there and we'll collect the last science possible. And since we already unlocked all the technology, this is going to be a very, very short mission. I have unlocked warp drive and I've been collecting antimatter. So this is going to be a very small craft powered by antimatter, which should enable us to get to Tyla with no problem and actually fairly quick. Okay, so... This is the craft, it has two people as crew, we have two fuel tanks, we have again the DT Vista engine, we have two antimatter reactors which right now are empty due to the lack of antimatter on the ground, and we have a fusion reactor just in case so the um, antimatter storage containment units don't explode on me. We have four science base and four mystery goo containers. And um, down here we have six plasma engines, which I'm gonna set to the right settings right away. Turn it on for liquid. Okay, and to get this into space, we're going to use beam power first, because I have an uh, antimatter storage facility in orbit now, and I will fly to it and obtain the antimatter we need once we're in deep space, or actually over Jewel. Uh, so here we go. So yes, the mission objective is fairly simple. We're just trying to get to Tylo, collect the science that we need, and then we're going to head back. And that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Just a simple bonus mission. So I did some test flights with this craft, but I never tried getting it out of the atmosphere so far, so this will be the first flight experience. So here we're just gonna fast forward for the docking sequence with the anti-matter station. And yeah, it's just normal docking, you guys have all seen it before. And just aligning notes and getting it ready. Um, we'll do it really, really quick. All right, so we're docked, and let's see how much antimatter we have on this station. We have forty-five thousand antimatter collected. All right, that's very good. Let's turn on these lights. It's a little bit too bright. Okay, so we're just transferring all the antimatter that we'll think we'll need. We're just gonna take an estimate. I never really tried antimatter before, so I'm just gonna take as much as I can with me and then return it once I'm coming back. So yeah, it's time to undock again. And um, yeah, we're pretty much set to go. Let's get to Jewel and let's get to Tylo. Um, as you've seen me maneuvering close to the station, you notice that I used the plasma engines on the undercarriage of the craft. I have to do that because the DT Vista engine has a radiation hazard which would kill the Kerbin that is stationed on the antimatter station. And I have to use the plasma engines, I had to use the plasma engines to slow down. So whenever I'm close to any other kind of uh, vehicle, I have to use the undercarriage um, engines to not 
kill my Kerbins. Okay, so yeah, I think we're set. All right, so we're gonna use the interior view to align ourselves perfectly to go to Jewel. There we go. Just because in here I can zoom in and I have a much better view. So we're on target. It's time to activate the warp drive. And we're off. And it's gonna take us 33 minutes to get to Jewel. And since I'm not gonna want to show this guy all this to you guys, we will have to fast forward it. And here we are with the powers of time acceleration. So I skipped the part where I got the jewel just because it's boring. And I set up another warp initiation to get to Tylo. And then it was just once again trying to slow down. What I realized is that finishing the tech tree it allowed me to have the plasma engines have a, a fuel mode that's called um, vacuum plasma. And vacuum plasma pretty much means whenever this engine is out of the atmosphere, it does not consume any liquid fuel or any kind of propellant. So the only thing it needs is actually power. So instead of using the DT Vista engine, which does consume a lot of power at maximum, th uh, uh, a lot of fuel at maximum thrust, I used the uh, plasma engines to slow me down. So here we're already trying to descending to descend and ooh, we even have Jewel and Layeth in the background while we're landing. And I have to admit landing on Tylo is I'm just gonna use the swear word, it's a bitch. I thought I had enough thrust with the DT Vista engine and the thrust is at the bottom. But somehow I think I miscalculated somehow some things and um yeah, the engines on the undercarriage were not enough to slow me down efficiently enough to land safely on the wheels. So what I had to do is I actually had to land on the back of the craft, which I tried in my original attempt with independence, but I never got it to work. And as you can see here, my first attempt and and I don't even want to go into it how often I had to try this to land but here is the one where I actually made it. It was just tilting over a little bit and I had to use RCS to get it straight and then slowly fall down and use the undercarriage to slow me down proficiently enough. Okay, so at least we made a landing. We landed on Tylo. Finally. <laughs> um, yeah, this actually took me over an hour to land this and I had to try two different saves to land it and this is the final version where I was capable of doing it. So yeah, now it's just time to get out and collect all the science that we've been missing. Simple as that, and yep, just collecting this, collecting mystery goo. So I actually have more uh, science containers here than I would have needed, but I was not sure if I transfer some data back or use some multiple ways, but I had the capacity in the cargo bay, so I thought why not bring along and you can hear the sounds of the chatter mod, which I really, really like. Um, it's gonna sound a little bit um, high pitched at the moment due to the fact that I fast forwarded parts of these because otherwise it would be way too boring and so you now hear me babble and babble just to keep you guys entertained. Alright, so just moving around collecting all the signs. I had to put in these ladders on the side so uh, I'm on a planet with a lot of gravity where the uh, normal thrusts of the EVA suits wouldn't work. I 
installed these ladders so I could get back to the science base and collect the science without falling into um, the cargo bay and never being able to get out and ooh, and yeah that's the dive through the hole <laughs> okay so now the only thing left is plant a neat little flag and celebrate it with a jump <laughs> and take a surface sample and an EVA report from the surface now yeah, I'm just gonna let you guys enjoy what I was trying to type here since my typing skills were that awesome. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I just came up with some witty thing and I was just happy that I finally made the landing and I was really glad that it actually worked, partially, after a lot, a lot of tries. I wonder if they're ever gonna put in like a hard mode into this game where you cannot quick save or quick load anymore. It just does auto saves from time to time, which you can or cannot revert to, I don't know. But it would be interesting to put in a hard mode where you cannot reload or resave and you pretty much have to test vehicles knowing that if you fail, you're gonna lose money and you're going to lose um, And I thought that it would be really, really challenging for a lot of people. It would probably be not something for me. I'd probably not be good at it. All the videos I've done so far are on the prospect that I can sometimes reload. And um, yeah. So here I was trying to take off just with the uh, normal thrusters. And as I said, the landing took me hours. The getting back into space took me even a lot longer. And my solution finally was um, the warp drive. So I bounce off the rear of that edge and just activate the warp drive. <laughs> that was really the only way I could get up. Whenever I tried just launching normally with the undercarriage um, thrusters and the main engine, I could get over a hill, but then I couldn't get the nose up quick enough for the DT Vista engine to give me enough thrust so I could escape the planet. So the um, DT Vista engine had enough power to get me off the planet, but I would have had to be aligned exactly um, vertical to the planet's core, which as I said, I, w I could not get the nose up quick enough and I tried and I tried and I tried and I tried and I tried. I think I have over two hours of fail videos of me trying to get up into space. And then I realized, hmm, wait, we're not in an atmosphere. I could use the warp drive. So I did. <laughs> so we pretty much just bounced off the edge, activated the warp drive and jumped away from that goddamn planet. I'd be interested to see, I'm gonna have to look up later, I, I don't even know how other people uh, in the vanilla game, how you can get to Tylo, land on it and get back up, because that amount of engine power and fuel you need to land and get back up must be immense. So I'm quite curious and I have to look up some videos because I'm interested to see how other people did it. And um, yeah. Here we're just aligning ourselves again to jump back to Kerbin. And um, yeah, time to activate the warp drive. And again, just to make it faster, we have the power of fast forward. And somehow I forgot to put the gear back up. However, so we just do uh, some multiple jumps to get as close to Kerbin as possible because the closer you jump to a planet the more gravitational uh, pull you get from it. So what you could actually do instead of just uh, jumping there and decelerating like I am already doing here, you could uh, jump in all over and over again until you pretty much the planet captures you but you will always need an extra engine to get you into the places that you want. Otherwise, you probably get into uh, unstable orbit and you'll crash on the planet. 
So here, we, as I said before, we need to redock with the antimatter um, station to um, store all the antimatter that we took out earlier because we're not going to need it as we're landing with the craft. Since once I landed with the craft and said um, recover vessel, all of the antimatter that is stored in the vehicle will be lost. So once again, undercarriage for maneuvering close to any other manned objects. And now we're just gonna do a normal deorbit burn. And I am trying once again to get to the uh, Kerbal Space Center. I always try, line, try landing close to the Kerbin Center since it's, well, it's an extra challenge and it just seems more realistic to not just land anywhere on the planet. And I don't really trust uneven surfaces anyway, so the best way to land is actually close to the Kerbin Space Center because everything around the Kerbin Space Center is flat and the runway itself, well, you couldn't get any more flat than that. So a little bit of a stabilizing problem I had right here. So I had to muck around with um, the fuel and yep, there, there it is, there it is. I lost control, but I got it back. I had to transfer fuel a little bit around with the TAC fuel balancer, which I can really, really recommend. It is a really, really good mod. It just gives you a lot more um, ways to control your vehicle, especially if you're using space planes. I actually think it's essential. And I hope they're gonna put something similar or close to it and to the final version of the game, whenever that will be. <laughs> so yeah, here we're just coming in for the landing and slowly, slowly get onto it and touchdown with explosion. Yeah, so the mission was a success after retry and retry and retry and retry and retry. Oh, and don't let me forget after retry. <laughs> well, yeah, we landed. We got everything back as we wanted without some parts that we had to leave behind. And uh, yeah, let's see. All right, so we've earned almost 2,000 signs just from going to Tylo. Well, this mission was interesting and took me almost an entire day to get everything to work as I wanted it to work. And um, <laughs> I think it's actually quite funny how I, the only way to get off Tylo was using the warp drive. But now I have visited every planet and I've collected all the science there is to obtain, pretty much. I mean, you usually can get more out of it if you go back and collect it again and again and again. But I'm pretty much done with this save since I've gone to every planet, I unlocked all the science I wanted to unlock, and I pretty much did all I wanted to do. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and um... Maybe I'll start a new series with the next patch when they will be introducing money and missions. And until then, I will have a lot of exams to take. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. And till next time.